Hi again, it's Jason from Fraser Valley Rose Farm. I'm going to show you some close-ups now of some garden beds around my yard. And what you will see is the plants are looking a little overgrown. Yeah, there are weeds. And they're starting to look a little bit spent for the season. It's getting to be autumn and they're starting to look a little bit blown. Okay, so the question I want to answer for you is whether you should or should not prune your plants going into the fall or maybe you should wait. This is a bit of a strategic question for you. It's based on your climate, it's based on your personal circumstances, your plants, but I can give you the right questions to ask and some of the answers to those questions. So the first question I'll be asking, first consideration will be, what will it do to the health of your plants? Will it improve it for this year and for next year, or will it make it worse if you prune it right now? The second question that you have to ask is, how does it look? Will it retain some ornamental value going later into the fall or is it better just get rid of it now? The third question I want you to consider is when do you have time in your personal life? So that may override some of the other considerations. And finally I will bring up the concern of what is good for beneficial insects in the landscape. Sometimes if there's no harm in leaving it standing you'll provide a habitat for beneficial insects in your yard over the winter. May as well start with roses since a lot of you come here for rose information. This rose here is definitely continuing its bloom period all the way into fall. That tells you something about the genetics of the rose. It wants to continue growing. If I were to give this one a hard prune right now, what you would end up with probably is a lot of soft, fresh growth going into the winter season. That would be the wrong thing for this. So I'm going to let it wind down naturally. It's already at a pretty appropriate height. I don't think the wind is going to blow its stems around too much. So I would skip pruning on this plant for sure. This rose, on the other hand, has these long stems to contend with. It's thrown these long shoots all the way through the season. So I really only have the choice of either cutting them back or securing them down because the winter winds blowing this around will injure the plant. So in the balance on this one, because it isn't in active growth and because it has these long stems, I'm going to go ahead and do a prune and clean up towards the end of the season like this. As I pull back here, I hope you can see that I've created a lot of space in the center of that shrub. Now because this is a once blooming rose, it's going to bloom on old wood, I left a lot of old stems on here. Some of the older stems, some of the ones that came this year as well, just to protect the succession of the flowering. Uh, and what I tried to do is separate them into those that I will train left along the fence and those that I will train down right along the fence, just tying them down with some twine. Before I move on to perennials, which can be really forgiving about the time of year that you prune them back, they don't really care whether it's fall or spring for the most part. Shrubs, on the other hand, can be a little fussy about that. And in this case, Google is going to be your friend. Uh, if you do it the wrong time of year, sometimes you can sacrifice flowers. Other times it'll sacrifice survivability. Like in the case of this Budlia, it actually prefers a spring prune very much so. If I pruned it back now, I would see more winter dieback. And if I prune it back in the spring, it'll bounce back beautifully. So do yourself a Google search, choose the name of your shrub and say pruning spring or fall, and you'll get some good advice there about what uh, your trade-offs are in pruning it in spring or fall. Staying with the theme of pruning to improve the condition of plants as they go into the winter, you can see that this is quite an overgrown bed. What's in there is actually a mixture of salvia, campanula, and some agastache over on the left with, if you can look at the other side of the fence there, there's a keringoshima over there. So it's a bunch of perennials that have grown into each other. And if I leave them like this, what will happen is it will retain moisture, you'll have dead and dying plant material in there, and you'll end up with botrytis, which is sort of a rot organism, getting into that salvia and causing rot, perhaps even down to the crown of the plant. So I'm going to give it a clean up now. All told, it took me about five minutes to cut it down to this low stubble between, say, 10 and 18 inches, uh, based on the varieties. And you can see I'm not too concerned about how it looks going over the winter. It's just a matter of cutting off that extra plant material. And here's where it is. That's the pile. Uh, and all of that is plant material that was going to be susceptible to rot over the winter. So I'm happy to have it off of there. And what will happen is this 
stuff here, the standing stubble, will just continue to dry and rot down over the winter. So by the time I have to address it in spring, it'll be easy enough to just pull that, pull those stems off by hand, no problem. The second thing I asked you to consider was whether the plant is an ornamental feature or adds ornamental value to your fall and winter garden. This one here is a Heucarella with beautifully marbled leaves. Love this guy, and it basically stays semi-evergreen, meaning as long as we don't get a super hard frost, that's gonna keep its color and look good far into the fall. A different story here though, is the hostas basically start looking tattered, looking gross, and melting down at the first sign of winter and fall. They basically start going yellow, brown tips, looking ugly, and as soon as it gets hit by a first hard frost, it will turn into a beige mound of mush. So your call on when you want to take it off, I guess so long as the leaves are in decent condition, they're adding energy to the crown of the plant, but as soon as they tip that scale and they're too ugly for your tastes, go ahead and cut them down to a stubble at say two to three inches. Another heuchera, and here back at the roses, I just wanted to point out one thing that kind of looks a bit ugly in the garden right now are these, these kind of spent flowers that don't really add any ornamental effect. And maybe your first impulse would be to cut those off, but not so fast, because there's plenty of plants that show ornamental features in the winter. These little hips, that are forming, these little berries that are forming on your rose will turn into quite a nice display of color. I'll insert a picture here of what this one looks like. Okay, so I know I started with the consideration of what's the best thing for the plant. And if you have all the time in the world, maybe that's the way you want to strategize it. But the truth is that many of us have well, we all have lives that we have to fit this around. In my case, I'm very, very busy in the spring, not so much in the fall. So my strategy is to cut everything down to that low stubble in the fall, leave it, and then spring cleanup is a cinch. If you're in the opposite situation and you have uh, a lot of time in the spring, but not so much in the fall, then it's no harm at all in general for you to leave all your plants standing and unpruned until the spring, or even indeed, well into spring if you have to. I usually delay my rose pruning past the sort of rule of thumb window of when the early, uh, early shrubs bloom. And I usually do my first pruning on a lot of my roses after they do their first bloom in the year. So you have to fit these things into your lives. I just wanted to mention that at this point in the video. Before I finish with the topic, I just want to put in a good word for your beneficial insects and pollinators, which use some of the foliage that you leave standing over the winter or late into the season as a way for them to make their living. Obviously, it becomes harder for bees to find flowers late into the season as things stop blooming so actively. And so having standing foliage, standing plants in the garden is a really good thing for them. Also, when you cut to that stubble, and, you know, speaking of stubble, here's a piece of stubble from earlier in the year. And you can see how there's a hollow in the middle of that stem. That's a place where some insects lay their eggs and take shelter over the winter. Some of those are the beneficial insects that will be fighting your aphids first thing in the season. So if you can leave some standing foliage, some standing stubble, uh, some grasses, some shrubs, uh, even overwinter active like evergreen shrubs, if you can have that mix in your garden, you'll definitely be helping balance the population of your beneficial insects and pollinators in the garden.